operate the local health department. All right, everybody, welcome back to News Now from Fox, coming at us live from Washington, D.C. We have Professor Anita McBride. She is executive in residence at American University, the School of Public Affairs. Ms. McBride, you are our first repeat guest here on News Now from Fox. That means you're on yesterday and now you're on today. So good morning. Thanks for joining us again. Good morning. I'm thrilled to be back. I just kind of wanted to talk to you about what did you think about yesterday? Mm -hmm. Well, I thought it was an uplifting day. I think the country really needed this yesterday and needed to feel this sense of uh, unity as uh, the new president said frequently in his speech. Uh, I think it was terrific to see the former presidents and former first ladies together. That's always an important optic at an inauguration. And I think that the person who really stole the show though was the young poet. Uh, Ms. Uh, Amanda Gorman, amazing uh, what she did, how she crystallized where we are as a nation right now and where we need to go. Yeah, matter of fact, so we have a bunch of different television monitors here in the studio where I can see all the competition, right? Because we got to keep tabs on all the news. And within the last <laughs> five minutes, everybody was talking about Amanda Gorman. Oh, yeah. We played a story in a little bit. We're going to play the entire poem in its entirety and she made history being the youngest poet mm -hmm. laureate or the first mm -hmm. or both? Yeah, the youngest poet laureate. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, um, and yeah, 22 years old. I mean, that's to me, that is and what, you know, the country needs. Now, this is a new, this is a new chapter, but it's also there's so many young, talented people in our country. They want a, a, a good nation at, to live in and they want to be contributors to it. And that's a great inspiration. You know, I was kind of surprised by Amy Klobuchar yesterday as well. She was kind of like the host of the whole event. Yeah. Well, you know, so there was so there's a little story behind the Joint Congressional Committee on Inaugurations. It used to be run only by the Senate. Um, in our history. And then about 1901, it changed because the House of Representatives says, we always get the seats in the back of the bus here, and that's not what we want. And uh, they were always the back of the platform. And so the Joint Congressional Committee on Inaugurations was formed between the House and the Senate. And so for, and there's always, it's always bipartisan in each of the bicameral um, uh, parts of the Congress. So Amy Klobuchar is the Democrat, Roy Blunt as the Republican um, on the Senate side had responsibility. And that, uh, yeah, and her remarks were great. I mean, here's a person who could have been her, you know, being sworn in or being um, um, delivering the inaugural address. It, she did a great job. Did anything else surprise you or stick out to you? Of course, we had Lady Gaga singing the national anthem. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody always talks about Lady Gaga's outfit. She mm -hmm. had the huge gold bird on her. She had the gold microphone. I think that the maybe um, no one told her there are no, no inaugural balls that night, no need to wear a gown. But you know what? She was, that's, that's her personality. She was invited to bring herself and her personality and her talent to that podium. And uh, and there you have it. She made yeah, she made quite quite an entrance and and really did a beautiful job with all her heart and soul singing, you know, our anthem. Another talker, uh, Jennifer Lopez, J Lo for short. She did two mm -hmm. songs and one of them she broke out in Spanish. It was kind right. of a, it was kind of an unprecedented moment. And right. she, um, what, what were your thoughts on that? Well, here's my thought on that. This is not her day. <clears throat> she was there to sing. That's what she was invited to do. The inaugural platform, in my mind, is not where she gets to make her statement. It's where the new president gets to speak. And I'm sure they were all fine with it. I'm just too much of a traditionalist on that. I think she's a wonderful singer, um, but she should have left it at that. That's my feeling. Speaking of the celebrity performances, and uh, they were fine with that, Garth Brooks. Oh. Did you, did you see he, the hug? You know what? Yes, he hugged every former president and first lady. And when he saw that he forgot someone, he went back. And that was, yeah, right, again, a, sort of a non-traditional decorum on the on the stage. But you know what I saw that was not, not like, you know, a, a 
defiant remarks. I thought that was such a great example of sort of this sense of relief and breath that everybody is able to take right right now and and just sort of the the warmth and the wrapping of arms around um your friends and neighbors and uh that i think it set was part of the tone of the whole day you are actually there in our nation's capital what did you see what did you hear how far away are you from all the activity that happened well, I live, I live in Northwest DC. I live about just less than four miles from downtown. You know, I have always, I'm downtown quite a bit all the time. Um, the White House Historical Association where I'm on the board, a block from the White House. Um, I chair several committees, so I'm down there a lot. It's right at ground zero by Black Lives Matter um, Plaza. But, you know, recent months have been very difficult to navigate um, downtown. And then of course, with all of the National Guard and all of the blockades that were set up, you know, in the perimeter was so extended here in DC, uh, as far as 23rd Street um, in the Northwest. So I really didn't venture downtown but once. So I was safely here in my home doing interviews all day from 7 a.m. Yours was the first show I did yesterday and finished it about nine last night. Do you think everybody living in DC is ready to get back to normal? Well, the nice thing was that we all saw on our local news channels, you know, last night that um, a lot of the barriers, a lot of the fencing already started to come down at the at the perimeter ends that were really so far extended from uh, the White House and the Capitol. So that's good news for people in those neighborhoods, particularly up on Capitol Hill. People live there. They live really close on top of each other and townhomes and and uh, I know people whose houses were right at checkpoints and they really just had to leave town to be able to um, you know, live somewhat normally. So I'm sure they're happy to come back. Professor Anita McBride with the School of Public Affairs at American University. Thank you for joining us again here on News Now from Fox and for your insight. Anytime, thank you. Have a great day. You too, take care. Bye. All right, and when we're taking a live look now at the U.S. Capitol, much quieter this morning compared to yesterday. But as you just heard Professor McBride say, Washingtonians are ready to get back to life as normal there in our nation's capital. We are seeing a top of all breaking news.